All right, so first of all, let's create some kind of space. After letting the user type in all the numbers, let's create some kind of empty line before displaying the numbers. So let's let's do that. So this is where the user um, types in all the numbers, and this is where we have over here where we print out all the numbers. It's in our print number analysis function. This is where it's printing all the numbers. So after that, outside a loop, before it prints out the lowest number and all that all that stuff, we can actually this is hold on. This is before this is before this is the uh, loop that it's printing out all the numbers. So before it prints out all the numbers, we need some kind of uh, space or empty line after uh, before that. So let's create it here. So when you call the print function um, and you type in something, right? It's going to print out that something. But when it prints it out, when it's done printing it out, it's going to move the position from the end of this line to the next line. And anything that comes after what you just printed will be displayed from the next line down. That's how it works. So if you call the print function and you type in nothing, what it's doing is it's printing out nothing. This time it's printing out something, but that something happens to be nothing. It's printing out nothing on a line. But we know the way it works is by default, it ends whatever you've printed with a new line. So it prints not nothing, but it will move the position from the end of that not line to the next line. And anything that comes after that nothing you just printed on that line will be displayed from the next line going. So that's the effect. Basically, when you call a print function and, and passing nothing, it's going to create an empty line. Let's see that in action. I know we, this is going to be a, a bit uh, of you know, work type and all of this, but let's just see it in action. One for all of them. And we can see we have a nice empty line here. OK, so now let's work on the numbers here. I don't want it displayed uh, vertically. I want it displayed horizontally with like a comma separating them, so something like that. So this is the function that prints out all the numbers. So we print out the number. And then, so the thing is, by default, the print function prints out whatever you've told it to print. So it prints out one in this case. By default, the print function always prints out whatever you've told it to print and ends it with a new line. What that means is it, what that means is it prints out one, for example, and then it moves the position from the end of that line to the next line here. So anything that follows that first one we printed, anything that follows that will be printed from the next line going. And then it will move the position from the end of that line to the next line. And anything that follows that will be displayed from the next line going. But we don't want that. That is the default um, ending, OK, after printing out something. We can change that. We can change the ending value by typing or by passing us a different argument, end, and changing that to something else. We can change the end value of this print function to um, a comma and a space. So basically, print out. Print it out, but do not end it. Do, you know, do not end it the way you normally do with a new line character, but end it this time with a comma and a space. So let's try that. Let's type in one for all of them. All right, so we can see it's it's working. So print one with a comma for all of them. Doesn't look nice here. Um, we, we would like the last value here to be a period, right? We would like all of them to, to be separated with commas and the last value here to be a period. And we can do that. So the only number here we want to change the ending to a period is this last value here, this last value. We may not know the last value, but we can access it with its, with its index. We know that if you have a, a list containing 20 items, the, f the index, first index is going to be 0, and then the last index is always going to be 1 less than the length of the, of the list. This list contains 20 items, but the index of the 20th item is always one less than the length of the list, which is 20. The length of the list is 20. This will be index 19. So the last item in the, in, a, in the list, the index of that will always be one less than the length of the entire list. Okay, list of 20, last index. Uh, the, yeah, the index of the last item is 19. So we can target that. We can say if this, if the index, while we are basically looping through our um, loop, looping through our list, if the index is the last index, okay, then let's end it with a with a period instead of a comma. So we can do that here. While it's printing out the numbers, we, we can create the condition and say if at any time the current user number index 
if the current user number index is equal to double equal to if you're using double equal to you are comparing you're asking is what on the right equal to what's on the left don't use one equal sign if you use one equal sign you are assigning what's on the right to what's on the left so we want to compare we want to use two double equal signs <clears throat> so if the current user in number index is equal to the last index and the way you get a target the last index is if it's equal to the length of the list minus one if the list contains 20 okay 20 20 items then the index of the last or, or the index of the 20th element will be 19 so we are doing it's always going to be one less than the length of the list to the length of the list minus one 20 minus 1 is 19 so if that index is 19 then we want to you know end it with a period so in this case we want to let's just finish our, our if statement in this case we want to print out the number but end it with a period instead instead of a comma and then we can have our else statement here else means if the index is not the last index then let's print it the normal way let's print the number the normal way but let's end it with a comma instead. All right, so let's try that as well. This is just to help um, with, with understanding. So if you already know, you feel feel free to skip ahead. If you don't know and it's helping, then I'm glad. Let's type in one for all of them. Okay, so we can see it separates in them with all commas here, but when it gets to the last one, it always ends it with one. Sorry, always ends it with a period. It doesn't matter if how many numbers you're printing. It always ends the last number with a period. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is break this line. So this is moved to the next line, all right? So something like, or maybe two spaces down or something, or two empty lines down. All right, so lowest number, highest number. All right, so this is where in our code it's starting, starting to print out you know, the, the other stats, which is the lowest number and all that. So right before it, we can embed a new line okay character okay which is a backslash and so backslash and together is the new line character escape sequence backslash and together makes up the new line character when the interpreter sees this it it, it, it immediate, immediately moves the position from the you know from there it moves the position from there to the next line and anything that comes after this new line character will be displayed from that next line going Let's run this and see how, how, how it goes. So I'm going to quickly do this. I know it's kind of annoying, but I mean, it's not annoying, but I'm, I, it may be for, for some of you. But it's just for testing purposes. All right, so by doing this, we can see that the interpreter saw the new line and it moved the position from where it's at here to the next line. And anything that came after that new line character, which is the lowest number and all that stuff, was displayed from the next line going. Okay, you can do two new lines if you want. You can do backslash n, backslash n. Um, it won't be displayed. It will just, will just um, work the way it's supposed to work. Now the next thing is I want to display these on on, it, on their own individual lines. So we have lowest number one, we have highest number one, total number of total of numbers twenty. I want them all displayed on their own line. So by default, the print function also has a separator. It separates each argument you passed into it. So by default, when you passed arguments, by default when you passed arguments to the print function, they are Print it with a space separate in them. So this is the first argument. You can see, look, this is one argument here. This is another argument here. So it prints out this argument and it separates it with a space. We can see there's a space here. And it prints out the next argument and we can see there's a space here. And prints out the next argument, we can see there's a space. So by default, the separator is a space. And we can change that space to a new line. So basically, print it out, print that, but don't separate it. With a, don't separate it with a space, but separate it with a new line. Move the position from the end of that line to the next line, and, and then display the next item, and then break it to the next line, and so on and so forth. Now we can change that also in the print function by passing in the separator SCP, not a full separator, but SCP argument. We can change that from a space to a new line character backslash n. Okay, so. It's going to print out the first argument and then create a new line character, or it's going to embed a new line character there, which means it's going to print out this, move the position from where it's at here to the next line, and anything that follows will be displayed from the next line going. And it's separated a new line, 
the next one follows and the next one follows and so on and so forth all on all on new lines each of them on a new line so when i run this and i type in the values we can see that it prints out the numbers and it, it prints out um, these these stats as well so so over here when it's printing out the numbers you can have a print statement for example that says um, we can say user numbers provided something like that and then it, it prints out the numbers so so now let's test you know for accuracy and see if it's it's working properly let's test for accuracy all right so let's do well did we check that one anyway all right so let's do um, one plus two plus let's just type in a bunch of numbers like this All right, so let's see if this is correct. So these are the numbers I entered. Oops, user numbers provided. User numbers provided. Hold on a second. Okay, so that's because that's because I had a new line here. And so it printed out user numbers provided, and we had our new line. So it's not looking uh, the way we want. We can actually embed this print function in our over here. We can do that. Or we can actually embed it directly here. You can do that. I just don't want to confuse you, so I'm going to have another print function. We can do this. This is outside. And I normally don't like using multiple print functions if, if I don't have to. You can do this. This is one way. All right. So if you want to do this, go ahead and do that. But I'm actually going to add it to this one here. So I created a new line. I created a new line. And then I'm going to type in, let's see here. I'm going to type in user numbers provided as part of the string and I'm going to create another new line character backslash n so it's going to break the line we basically create that space we wanted and then it's going to display user numbers provided and then move the position from the end of that line to the next line before displaying the rest of the numbers okay so let's see how it looks try again one two three four Okay. Um, hold on one second. Actually, this is no, 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 no. <laughs> this is this is not what I wanted. Uh, okay. So, uh, so that, that that's bad. All right. So let me undo. So we realized that we printed actually. I, I wanted to print it. I I didn't take notice of this. I wanted to print it before it, these numbers and not not the stats. Let's undo to what we had. The two multiple front, uh, right here. This is what, what what we wanted. But we don't want it here. We want it above. Above, above this, right? We want it above this before printing out all the numbers. So since we have a print function here that is basically, you know, printing out nothing, uh, we can we can work with that. We can actually, you know, type something in there. Hold on. In the end, we can type something in there and then use a, a new line character to kind of work with it. So first, let me just type something in there just so it doesn't confuse you. User numbers provided. And then let's run it, and I'll explain how we can break the lines with the new line character. I'm sorry for all that. I just want this to be clear, just so it doesn't confuse um, some of you. Again, if you already understand this, please feel free to skip through. If not, if it's helping, that's good. All right, so user numbers provided, but we've missed our space we wanted. So right before the user numbers provided, we want a space above it. So right before that, I'm going to create a new line character. Okay, so it's right before that it's going to create a new line, uh, create a new line, which is going to move the position from where it's at here to the next line, to the next line, and anything that follows that new line character is going to be displayed from the next line going. All right, so so that's it. That, you know, that's it. I'm not going to you know the formatting. I just wanted to explain this just so you can format it however you you guys want it. So now let's test the accuracy. It should it should work out? Let's just test the accuracy now. We have too many numbers to that's why it's taking long. But if you Test it out with a few numbers. That should that should work. Okay, so now this is kind of what I wanted. Yeah, you can also create another new line here, uh, another one here, just to move this a step further down. But it, you know, this this is fine. These, these are the user numbers provided. So let's test the accur accuracy. I know you can do this, some of you in your head, but I just want this to be clear. So let's let's just add all, all of our numbers together. Okay, um, right here. 
Okay, so we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Um, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, 6, plus 5, plus 4. Alright, so the total is 78, and we can see the total of numbers is 78, so that's correct. Now, the highest number in this is 7, and that's correct. There's, there's no 8, 7 is the highest, and the lowest number is 1, of course. So even though there are, you know, yeah, so basically, yeah, the, 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 low, the lowest number is 1. And then now the average of numbers is basically the total, which is 78, divided by how many numbers there are, which is, oops, which is, how many numbers there are, which is 20, 78 divided by 20, and that gives you 3.9. You can see that's correct. So it's working. Um, so that's it. We're done. I just apologize for the back and forth. I just wanted to make sure that the formatting issues is fine and so that you can also have a good understanding enough to change it however you want. Apart from that, the accuracy is working. The beautiful thing now is now instead of uh, allowing the user to type in 20 values, you can just do three not three values. And when you run it, it just says, please enter the number one. I'm going to type in one, number two, five, and then number three is four. And that's it. And it just works for four, three numbers you provided. See, so still ended the last value here with the period. Lowest number is 1, highest number is 5. You're dealing with 10, which is the total. And you divide, you know, 10 by 3, and you get 3.3333. Or you can format this value, average of numbers. You can format it. You can format it here. Let's quickly do it, just so for some of you, if you want if you, if you want to. I'm going to remove the str function around it. So we still need a string in order to concatenate it to this string here. So I'm going to call the format function around it, rather. Now, the format function will end up returning a string, okay? After it's formatted, it will end up returning a string. So a string concatenated to a string won't be a problem. The format function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in what you want to format and how you want it formatted. Uh, um, that you want, how you want it formatted, okay? As if, um, basically, as a format string over here in double quotations, with format specifies um, in them, or basically, or basically in it, with format specifies in it. So I'm going to create a format string with the format specifiers. I want this value formatted as a floating point value, so I'm going to type in F. And I want it formatted to two decimal places, so I'm going to specify the precision, and you specify the precision before the type or before the conversion character. I'm going to type in point 0.2, which means I want it formatted to two decimal places. If you wanted to format it to three decimal places, you do point 0.3. But because I want it formatted to two decimal places, I'll do point 0.2. So point 0.2F precision comes before the type and basically I'm done. This will return a string, so no problems concatenating a string to a string. All right, so this is just one way of formatting. If you wanted to format all the values, you can you can go ahead and do that. I just wanted to add this just for some of you if you need it. Let's try one more time. Now we have only three numbers, so no problem. So let's just try 5, 89, and then 45. And then we can see this is formatted to two decimal places as a floating point value. Numbers, so everything is working. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, as always, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Um, have a good day. Have a good night. Have a, have a nice time. Have a sound sleep. And I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then. Bye-bye.